Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell. You know the drill. Linear Algebra 1. We're in Chapter 2 now. Matrices. Introductory definitions and operations is what we're going to do in Section 1.1. We're going to break this into roughly three videos. I'm making it up as I go along, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be three or four videos. What this lecture is going to do is, in the first of three or four, what we're going to do is give an overview, first of all, of the two main ideas that are happening structurally to these mathematical objects. We want a helicopter view of the structure of what these objects are, and then they have all these nice properties, which the real numbers also have, and we're mimicking in many ways. And that makes our lives as mathematicians a whole lot easier. If you can see all these structures, it makes your life a little easier too. We also have to define all these objects and so many things in there, and then you have to have these computational homework problems, and then you have to know how to do them. So you're focused on how do I do these problems, and what does everything look like, and what do they, all these things mean, and how do I compute things and give the, get the right grades and stuff. What we're worried about is the overall vector space structure of matrices. So we're going to define a set of all matrices, M, I, and matrices, and then we're going to define a vector space structure. What does that mean? Don't worry, we're going to get into that more than once and then in one of our later chapters it's going to be the vector space specifically of n-dimensional vectors. The other thing we're going to do in this chapter, on top of that we're building a vector space structure and what's going to happen is we're going to define an addition and a scalar multiplication and then there's 10 axioms. We'll go through them. 10 seems like a lot but I have 10 fingers that's not too much. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to define a matrix multiplication. In the good textbooks we call these linear operations first so it's going to be addition is a linear operation and scalar multiplication is a linear operation. Linear operations because every term is either a mul scalar multiple of a single variable <laughs> or something added to each other and that's the two linear operations we want to create linear things. On top of that, <laughs> after we do one, there's something else going on and they're like, I'm confused at what was happening. Once we do this, which we're happy about and we have to define all these things along the way, we're also going to define a true matrix multiplication. So there's going to be three operations. There's going to be A times B, there's going to be A plus B, and then there's going to be numbers times a matrix. The linear ones are these ones. And then true matrix multiplication is going to be this one. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to define matrix multiplication, which you are not going to enjoy at all. These ones are like, um, I like those coordinate wise. You use your fingers and match. This one is no. When you multiply, first of all, this isn't always defined to be well posed. You have to have the same number of columns in A as the number of rows in B, and then the outcome, the size of that matrix multiplication is the number of rows in A and the number of columns in B. What? Yes, so this is going to be much more complicated. And then in there, the i j entry is going to be the dot product of row I in here and column J in here. So we've got a whole bunch of terminology and all these types of things to talk about to try and define these things. Why the heck are we doing it? to solve linear systems. What we're eventually going to do when we phrase this, we're going to get a linear system, ax equals b, and then solve for a. I just basically gave the description of what we're going to do in this video in the title shot. Let's explain that in gory detail. As we develop this chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to have two main goals, which is what I was just trying to talk about, so let's slow the roll. I'm going to get excited again. These are the two stories we're telling in this chapter. So. Chapter 1, we already gave a Gaussian Jordan elimination to augment the matrix and systematically use three row operations to find out whether a linear M by N system has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. And those are the only three cases you can ever have. Story's over. Case closed. What else do we have to talk about in this class? So we're going to also now talk about chapter 2 is going to move into the general scenario of what we call the mathematical object of matrix. And then we're going to define the set of all matrices. And then we're going to say, well, now that we're doing this, how do we, could we combine matrices in some way? We want to know the first definition. Once you have two objects with real numbers, Numbers, we define intuitively equality. When are matrices equal? They're equal when all of their entries are equal. So we start getting a structure. We have to say when are things the same and when are things different. Once we get that, then we have to say, well, could we combine things in some way? And so then we call those linear operations. So we're going to get an addition. Can you combine them? Yes, you can. You never thought about it. You do it with numbers too. You have a two and a three. And can you make a five out of that? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can make a five by making a plus. Or with these ones, it's a little weird because it's the vector space over the same field R. But if I use matrix multiplication, it's going to be different. When I use regular multiplication, it's going to be a number six I can create instead of the number five. So depending on which operation I use with my point, I can create a different number. So I'm going to have two of those just with like the real numbers. We had addition and multiplication, but be careful. Now we're going to have three because matrices are slightly different. We're going to have addition of two matrices. 
but then the first linear operation is something different. It's not like the real numbers. It's going to take a real number as one of the inputs, but then the other input is not another real number. It's a matrix, which is going to be the thing that we define. And that's going to create another matrix out of a matrix. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a vector space structure for right now. That's 10 rules is what that means. And yes, we're going to make you memorize them and try to work with them and figure out what they are. You've already seen them. They're the real number axioms are going to be awfully similar to that's what we're mimicking for the matrices. So that's story one. We want to create a set of all objects called M by N matrices. Then what we want to do is define an addition and a scalar multiplication. And then on that, we want to show that that has a vector space or a well-behaved structure, just like the real numbers and a bunch of other things. The geometric vectors are going to be a vector space. The set of all polynomials of degree at most N are a vector space. All these types of things, continuous functions over a certain thing with addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space space. So we can create all these different kinds of vector spaces. Once we have that, we can do more mathematical things. That's one of the things we're doing in the chapter. On, from your point of view, all we're going to have is here's a matrix, here's a multiplication, here's an addition, here's a this, and you're going to have to memorize how to do them and work at them. What the heck are we doing with all these moving parts? The other thing we're going to do on top of that is we're going to define a couple more things. We're going to define a transpose of a matrix, and we're going to define matrix multiplication, and we're going to do that in the guise of the whole point of chapter two is essentially giving us another way of solving linear M by N systems, not Gaussian elimination. What we're going to do instead is we're going to take this story of how to, by the end of this chapter, we're going to have an all, it's actually two at least, different methods of solving linear systems. Kramer's rule and then this method. So there's another one I'm not even pointing out, but that will be at the end of this chapter as well. What we're gonna do is, one, we're gonna define what matrix multiplication is, not regular multiplication, it's gonna be matrix multiplication. And again, it's only well posed if the number of columns in A equals the number of rows in B, and then the outcome is of size, number of rows in A and number of columns in B. And then the entry here, Cij, is the dot product of row I in A times dot product of column J in B. What the heck is going on and why are they defining it that way? Not to torture you to solve linear systems at the end of this tunnel. So first we define matrix multiplication. You are not going to enjoy that. Then we define transpose. That one's a freebie, but we need it for this formula, which you're not going to enjoy again. Then we have to define identity matrix and the inverse of a matrix. You're like, that wasn't so bad. And then the question you forget to ask yourself is this. Given a matrix, how do I know whether it has an inverse and how do, do I find it? We're going to give two methods. I didn't list the other one. One of them is going to be the one method where you have to use Gaussian Jordan elimination to reduce row echelon form to find the block identity matrix and the inverse in this magic way using elementary matrices. We're going to do that in this chapter two. After that, we're going to give you a computational formula using transpose. That's why I need that guy specifically to give you a formula for computing this horrible thing. For numbers, it's just one over A is the inverse. Good. It's not going to be what it is here. Then what we're going to do is, why did we do all this force for the trees again? By the time we get here, you hate me so much because I've made you try to compute the determinant, which you're not going to like, and then this cofactor thing is you're not going to like, and then the inverse, and you're not going to like this, and you're so mad at this stage that you forgot what we were doing. So I'm pointing it out ahead of time. We're not becoming lumberjacks. You're like, I train you how to tr cut down trees, and you're like, I can cut down trees, I'm a lumberjack. It's like, yes, but we didn't want to become lumberjacks. We wanted to build buildings. You can drink drinks. Can you food food? No, but you can build buildings. Buildings. We're not becoming lumberjacks. We want to build complicated structures and solve linear systems. But first we have to learn how to fell the trees and put them all together and get all the moving parts. And the student at this stage goes, I'm a lumberjack with success. It's like, no, you forgot what the point was. Now that you cut all the logs down and you didn't kill yourself felling them, we need to put them together and create another structure solving linear systems. And that's the point of this chapter. Using this horrible business that we're going to get lost in now for several, several weeks. <laughs> at the end of that, the story is going to be use that structure to phrase a linear system as matrix multiplication and then solve for x in this equation. Let's start that journey. All right, our first definition of this chapter is a matrix or plural matrices, not matrixes. A matrix of size m by n is a rectangular arrangement of mn entries consisting of m rows and n columns. Just like when we did for the augmented matrix, I color coded for you to help. We're going to call the red ones rows and the green ones columns. So the first index tells you what row you're in, row one. They're all the same, red, 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 the first one. The second index changes as you go through rows because it tells you the column you're in. So if you're in the single column two, 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 the second index is which column you're in. Every entry, therefore, has two indices. The first one's for the row I that you're in. The second index is for the row J. 
trust me now when we do matrix multiplication, Cij will be rho, yeah, dot, dot, dot. So we're gonna have to reference those guys later. This is called the i jth entry of the matrix A, M, N. When we do proving or arithmetic with these types of things, when we start defining A plus B, we're gonna say A, I, J plus B, I, J is the matrix of correspondingly adding the coordinates A, I, J plus B, I, J if they're the same size. We're gonna need this notation for defining the further operations as well. This is the thing called matrix now. It has nothing to do with Neo and the one. Let's do a quick example. We don't have any moving parts. We don't have any addition or subtraction or scalar multiplication or any of these things, so we can't put anything together yet. The first thing we're gonna do after this is we're gonna give a bunch of more preliminary definitions about the terminology about the matrix. The first one that I forgot already is, and I can just show you right here, if the number of rows equals the number of columns, we call it a square matrix for obvious reasons. Otherwise, we call it a rectangular array. This is a two by three matrix. This is a three by two matrix. They're going to look like rectangles or they're going to look like squares. So when the indices match, this is a square two by two matrix. This is a square three by three matrix. When we solve linear systems, viewing it as matrix multiplication, the matrices have to be square because we only have a determinant for square matrices and therefore we only have an inverse for square matrices, not rectangular arrays. For now, A can have, and most of the time when we start this because we want to give you linear systems and have you solve them and stuff like that, we give you ones that have integers and whole numbers in them. Nice. Nothing says that the universe is going to do that to you, so there's a bunch of numbers. Look up who those numbers are and where they come from. That matrix is going to be a whole different ball game to row reduce than uh, other matrices. First of all, how would I do that if that is actually a two by two augmented matrix now? See how I put the line and now it's an augmented matrix. How do I solve that? Well, I'm gonna multiply by one interchange those I've got a leading one in the top corner, but then I'm gonna to have to multiply by pi and get rid of it. Hot mess, you try. Then what we're gonna do is, what's this transpose business? Uh, you're gonna see in the next video. So watch the next video and you'll find out who transposes. For now, this is going to be what you're gonna see later on when we define all these horrible inverse of matrices. This will be part of the building blocks. The inverse of a matrix is one over this determinant number times a cofactor matrix transpose. So you're gonna see me write this C11, C12 all the time. There he is. D is another thing we're gonna do next. Define a bunch of terminology about the main diagonal. And if you only have entries on the main diagonal at your zero everywhere else, we're gonna call this a diagonal matrix. So we're gonna get into this in the next couple of videos also, and a bunch of terminology for explaining the structure of what a matrix is and how we're gonna use that and reference this structure to solve linear systems. Also, this is gonna become an extremely important guy. This is the two by two identity matrix. When you matrix multiply him by anybody, he's the guy that leaves everybody alone. So when I ask this in a couple of videos, you can go back and look and I'm gonna say, what's gonna be the guy that multiplies and leaves everybody alone? Is it the all one matrix? No, he's extremely useful in linear algebra three. <laughs> for Jordan normal form, and we call that matrix the J. The matrix of all ones is called a J matrix. Same Jordan, I'm gonna guess. But this one, if we want identity, it's going to be this. You'll see why that's true when we show you how to do matrix multiplication. I can tell you're doing it because you're gonna use your fingers if you're doing it correctly. Then this is going to be for every size, we have a zero matrix. He's the guy that has zeros everywhere. Why would we be interested in that? When we add things, he's gonna be the thing that leaves everybody alone. That's gonna be the structure we're gonna build in this chapter. This is the object. The first thing we do when we have an object is say, let's define the set of all those objects and when are things equal in there? Before we do that, let's give a few more preliminary definitions on all of the horrible things that we call the structure of the diagonal entry, the main diagonal, and all those kind of things. Welcome back. I had to run upstairs. The kitties were meowing. Mew, 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 is all I could hear upstairs because they're standing right above us in the kitchen. So, yes, this is my basement, by the way. <laughs> this is Alice, and this is Ringo, and they're the two additions of two plus four equals six cats, my favorite kind of math, cat math. All right, let's do this. So basically what we're gonna do is try and focus on the definitions and not the kitties, that's impossible. Don't think about elephants. Definition, we have the following terminology basically for a matrix which is consisting of one row and then n columns possibly. Oh, I know, this be nice to each other. We have, we call that, okay, this isn't gonna work. And they're downstairs for the first time. Go see. What we're gonna do is we have a matrix of one row and n columns. We're gonna call, for obvious reasons, a row vector. I can do one at a time a whole lot easier than two. Then, if we have a matrix which is m rows, but only one column, we're gonna call that a column vector. 
And then what we're going to do is we can also think of once we have that terminology of a row vector or a column vector, that's how I get you to watch the diff. Yeah, there it is, column vector. We can view a matrix A as either M rows or N columns that will become useful later on. Okay, go play with your brother. Once I do this, this will help us for talking about the structure in particular when we do chapter four, when we do linear transformations, uh, this notation will come up. The standard matrix of a linear transformation is columns, the matrix viewed as columns, and those columns are created by doing the linear transformation applied to the canonical standard basis vectors of that dimension. What? Yeah, this terminology and notation will come back up in later chapters. The other terminology that I just did point out is if we have the M is equal to N, we call that array a square matrix, and we write a N usually, or in particular, we're, I'm going to write I N for the identity matrix. There's no point putting N cross N. We mean same number of rows and columns. The last piece of terminology we're going to do for this video is a, in a square matrix, we can have extra terminology. In a non-square matrix, you don't have a nice diagonal because it's not square, it doesn't line up. But if you have a square matrix, we call this the main diagonal of the matrix. And this one actually is called the off diagonal, but we rarely reference it. And these ones are the super and sub diagonals. But you don't need those to linear algebra three when we do Jordan normal form. I'll start talking about those guys. Right now, all you need is the main diagonal. And we call those entries, the diagonal entries, AI, I is going to be at a diagonal entry of that matrix. All right, I think that was enough for speeding of terminology for this lecture. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell. In the next lecture, what we're gonna do is a bunch more terminology. We're gonna define trace, transpose, and then we're gonna define the two linear operations of addition of matrices and scalar multiplication of matrices. And then we're gonna define it as a vector space structure. And then after that, in the next video, then we'll define the horrible matrix multiplication and try solving matrices using inverses of matrices and solving matrix equations. See you next time. Like your stuff drop.